Asa Bhagavatu Arahatu Sama Sambu Dasa Namo Dasa Bhagavatu Arahatu Sama Sambu Dasa Homage to you, the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one. Homage to you, the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one. Namo Saranto Suchedoye Olahudi Samyao Santotoshe. Wushang Shen Shen Wei Miao Fa by Chen Wan Jie Nan Sao Yu. Wo Jin Jen Wan De Shou Shi Yuan Jie Ru Lai Zhen Shi Yi. Supreme and wondrous Dharma, subtle and profound, rarely is encountered even in billions of eons. But now we see and hear it and accept it reverently. May we truly understand the Buddha's actual meaning. Venerable Master, Dharma friends, Shifu Shangren, Gowei Shishung, Dajia, Ami Tofo. My name is Hung Shur, and I'm here today to join, to welcome all of you, to join us to you in uh, looking into the Flower Garland Sutra. Today, I was checking my phone to see the today's date. It is Sunday, September 5th, here in the Gold Coast of Queensland. And it's Saturday, September 4th, back in California and other places around the planet where you might be listening in. Uh, glad to be here with you. And we're going to continue our exploration of ways to bring the Flower Garland Sutra alive. And you'll be the judge of whether that was a successful attempt. Uh, we're going to pull the curtain back today, so to speak, and explain our process, what we're all about as we uh, read the sutra today. This is sutra as literature, if you can get the sense of that. So let's begin by uh, chanting. Let's see here, we're going to come back to page 24. And here we go. We're going to invoke. First thing we do is we, we've had the qingfa, the request to the, the monk, in this case, that would be me, to speak, uh, speak the words and phrases to uh, bring the, the sutra forward for you. And the next step in the process is for me to lead all of us in asking the three jewels, the triple jewel, Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, and Dharma protectors to come and join in, to bless us, to lend their light to this enterprise. Now, I am a native English speaker, so I was raised in the culture of the West and the musical traditions of the West. And so I'm following my teacher, Master Shrenhua's uh, encouragement to me to use the cultural paradigms, the cultural modes, methods of the West. And he said, uh, use whatever your culture is familiar with, whatever you know, whatever tools you have to welcome the Sutra into your culture. So I, over time, I've been doing this now for 
three decades. And so I am incorporating folk instruments. Uh, uh, what, what you say, what am I doing? I am yi jiao feng xing, yi jiao feng xing, following instructions, doing as I was told. And so I have this instrument. It's a banjo. Originally from Africa, yes, but incorporated into culture of America, where I grew up. So that's part of how I'm doing it. And, you know, up for debate, whether it's appropriate, whether people feel it's respectful, whether they feel it's a joke, uh, I'll let posterity decide, okay? Meanwhile, we're going to request the sages. This is called Qing Sheng. Qing San Bao, Hai Yo Hu Fa Shan Sheng. Asking the gods and the dragons and the eightfold pantheon of spiritual dharma protectors to draw near. So, hope they like banjos. Let's see how it works. will be coming back a little later. Um, there we go. Back to page 24 on this text, which is Chinese only. We're going to use this. Let's see, 26, 24. There we go. Because see, uh, Arsha Jingang Yan Pusa Yan Fuzi Okay, Coming down here, mm, I'm got the wrong page here. Uh sure there we go. Right there. So that is ready. Excuse me while I sneeze. Okay, luckily Zoom lets you mute your mic. Okay, we got that ready. Uh, next we need the English, which is right here. See, sorry here. Uh, 
Uh, I, yeah, we'll find it. We'll get there just a little bit above, right there. Page 30. Yes. And now we have to enlarge it so we can see it. And there's the English. Okay, we've got two different texts here, and we're going to park that one down below as well and tell you what we're about to do before we do it. Um, we have invited the, let's see here, thousand eyes, one more piece that we're going to bring up. And it was not the six harmonies of the Sangha, not that one. Not the acts of kindness, not that one either. Uh, and that's the universal door chapter. That's the, let's see, try this one here. One moment here. 10th stage, 10th stage. Mm, hold on. Uh, <laughs> lots of. See here, where about, there we are. Yes, yes, yes. That's what we're looking for. What we are about is this. My, I'll, what I say, we're going to pull back the curtain. Um, there's, uh, uh, to, to be able to bring the sutra to you, um, both in, English and in Chinese and in Vietnamese, which is currently happening. We're having two different translations happening here at the same time. Uh, takes a lot of hands and hearts. It takes a lot of effort. Uh, there are two men with me here, uh, here in the Gold Coast of Queensland in our beautiful Buddha Hall, as you can see, who are uh, translating the sutra into uh, Chinese for uh, a growing Chinese language speaking audience. And we have been uh, fiddling with the details of microphones. I've got a microphone here, which I try to tuck out of the frame. Um, but let's see. Ah, interesting. Sam, the microphone's in the camera, and the camera is not good. There's no way to get it out. So that's okay. You just have to make friends with the microphone. My microphone is here. So ignore the microphone. So um, let's see, maybe if I slide. No, no. Okay. So we've been fiddling with the cameras and the mics and the lights, uh, trying to bring you a pleasing image that uh, is just right. So I'm not too big. I'm not too small. You can see the Buddhas behind. That's one piece, right? Um, we have the, when I came in today, I picked the wrong Wi-Fi network and it, because it has lower bandwidth, it looked terrible. And then we discovered, ah, ah, pick the other network. Now the definition is better. So there's lots of fiddly details involved in simply uh, translating my sound and my image to Zoom and Zoom carries the software, carries what I say and how I look and my le son et la lumière, as they say in French, the sound and the light. Um, carrying that to a computer in California where another team, another entire team of tech folks who are working so hard uh, take, what, um, take what I'm doing and uh, sending it, there we go, sending it to out to YouTube. And there are many folks who are watching on YouTube as well. And so that's one uh, aspect of the technology that allows me to sit here in Australia and you to sit wherever you are around the world and hear and see what I say. And that is strictly the externals. So there's that. Um, then there's the whole aspect of the text itself. Three weeks ago, 
two weeks ago, three weeks ago, because we had an Ulamban a week in between. Three weeks ago, I finished uh, a decade long, decade plus long effort at explaining the Dashabumi, Ka, the 10 stages chapter, the Shirdipin of the Flower Garland Sutra, the Avatamsaka Sutra. And that, uh, that was a lot of Saturday nights, a lot of Sunday afternoons here with the time change. The story of the Bodhisattva, male, female, young, old, Eastern, Western, ancient, modern, the template, the pattern, the paradigm of the Bodhisattva, we brought to you week by week by week. And I was following my teacher, Shang Shen Xiaohua, Lao Ho Shang. And his uh, nine year effort, not once a week, but every night and twice on weekend days to bring the Avatamsaka Sutra alive. I carried it forward too, and among, you know, along with other folks indeed. Um, we followed his example to, in Chinese, they say, Jiang Jing Shuo Fa explain the sutras and teach the Dharma. And sutra lectures are not popular, quote. If you look at uh, a contemporary English musician, Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran, terrific songwriter, singer, young man, red hair, twinkle in his eye, talented singer, composer, uh, he releases a music video and YouTube registers that billions of people have asked for that to flash on their screen to watch it. That's popular, popular. Ed Sheeran, you know, just a bright talent, releases a music video and billions of people uh, communicate. So I... Uh, bring a Buddha Sutra forward and maybe 300. <laughs> my minus, uh, what, five zeros in my, my response. Quite okay, quite okay, because why the Buddha's wisdom is hard to meet. And also because the entertainment value of a Sutra lecture is, can't compare to Ed Sheeran singing about the Galway girl, you know. Uh, monks, we, we sit still, we do stillness, right? We, one step away from, from sleep, right? We do stillness, we don't do move. Plus um, Ed, Ed Sheeran's, just for example, I'm picking on Ed because uh, his, he's so popular. Plus they're terrific, you know, his, he's a very talented guy. His uh, music video is over in three minutes. I drone on for 90. Uh, so you have to really want to listen to the Buddha's wisdom to put up with the unmoving camera, single camera, single microphone, single point of view aspect of a sutra lecture. Um, somebody uh, added me to, uh, a local monk added me to a panel discussion of Buddhist teachings, and they had the names of the the, the speakers on the panel, and then a one-line description, and I became the Zhu Ming Fu Jiao Yin Yue Jia. I thought, oh no, I'm the famous Buddhist singer. Uh, uh, you know, I apologize, Shu. That's that is, you know. So, for ninety minutes, sitting here listening to the Buddha's to a text. Um, how do you bring it to life? Well, you play a banjo, play a guitar, play a, a ukulele, a mandolin. Is that selling it short? Uh, from one point of view, sure. It's cheapening it, disrespecting it. From another point of view, um, not, not. It's, if it's, I guess there's no, you could say fa wu ding fa. There are no fixed dharmas. 
I'm following Master Hua's instructions where he said, use everything you know to bring the Dharma alive in your culture. You're never going to be Chinese. You're never going to be like me. Don't try to be. Why be a second rate Chinese person when you can be an original, true American person in your culture? That's the point. Okay. So you all understand. 90 minutes of anything requires some appeal. There has to be an attraction. So what is the, what's the, the biggest value of my being on here on your Saturday night, our Sunday afternoon for 90 minutes? And that the answer is English language sutra text. That's the answer. This is an English language approach to English language version of the Flower Garland Sutra. This is the Avatamsaka Sutra in English. After some 30, 40 years of listening to Master Hua's explanation, we have been mm, polishing up, you could say, working on, refining, honing, focusing on the principles of the Avatamsaka Sutra, integrating them with our daily cultivation of the Buddha's practices. And what you're about to hear represents state of the art in 2021. That is to say our best whack at it now after three decades of of rubbing up against it every day. Those who follow after us, if anybody is inspired to do this in the future, will have the advantage of my generation's three decades of work so that they then can, based on their own cultivation of the Dharma, go, we think it means this now. We, we're gonna change it and present it to you in the culture of the 22nd century down the road. Let's hope, let's hope. So that's, that's what we're doing, okay? Kind of a long wordy way. Luckily I'm not pressed by time. <laughs> so um, I can breathe in between these ideas that I'm trying to share. Now, last week, we started reading. We started reading the first stage. Why read the Avatamsaka Sutra after explaining it, after lecturing on it, after the deep dive analysis? This is another approach. It's a fresh look using more than simply the eyes and the left brain. We're trying to bring the Buddha's voice forward as the Buddha told the story of the first stage, we are honoring the narrative flow, the narrative flow of the text. We want you to hear the ideas in English. We want to watch the flow of the action, hear the points of the conversations, understand the principles, the way they're set up in the sutra in English and in Chinese. We expect this approach will provide a better chance for you, the listener, to get the point, to hear the Dharma, to absorb its wisdom as you hear it read aloud. The, anybody who, who enjoyed being read to by your folks or by a library lady or online, please take all you can, eat all you can in this buffet. Let the silence be, let the breathing be, let the pictures form in your mind, maybe even close your eyes. What do you think? Ah, close your eyes, you might go to sleep. So that's what we had in mind. Now, um, last week was our first attempt. And I realized on the spot as I was preparing to, to read the English that mm, pretty much numerically half of the audience listening right this minute wants to hear Chinese or Vietnamese. If I only do English, they will not get to hear. So we said we're doing Chinese and English text. Okay, that's what we had in mind. What we discovered to my surprise was, wow, um, 
when I read the Chinese, I'm more animated in a sense, more alive than when I read the English. So some of my good and wise advisors who know a thing or two about listening to sutras said, bring, bring it on. We want to hear more, more English, lively um, sounds. Don't, don't hesitate. You, you seem to be cautious and hesitant and don't be. Uh, be, make it come alive. So that's the idea. Okay. All right. So what have we said so far? So far, I said, we uh, have a lot of technical conditions that stack up in order for this lecture to come here, to come to you. Now I've given you a little bit about the thinking behind what's, what you're about to hear. This is an extended uh, behind the scenes description of the decisions that we made to do what we're about to do today. Uh, it's unusual. You won't, you haven't heard this before because I don't think it's existed before. Uh, this approach uh, with musical instrument to keep us going, to thread it along. Okay. Now let's look at the text. What happened last week? What happened last week? First stage of the flower garland sutra chapter on the 10 stages. What happened was the story, the announcement went out that the Buddha was going to explain the, the 10 stages. And as we know in the Flower Garland Sutra, the Buddha doesn't speak the Dharma. He picks others to do it. In this case, he picked a bodhisattva named Vajra Treasury, Treasury of Vajra Bodhisattva. And we heard about Vajra Treasury, how good he was, how appropriate he was to be the, the speaker of it. And Bodhisattvas flew in and sat there and got all ready to hear the Dharma. And what happened? Vajra Treasury gave the names of the 10 stages and stopped. That was it. He stopped. And everyone's like, well, but, but we didn't hear. We are ready. We really want to hear. They said, we're just like bees looking for pollen. We're like a thirst, thirsty person hoping for a drink of cool water. Please speak the Dharma for us. Please explain. And Vajra Treasury said, I can't. I don't want to because this is too rare. This is too refined. It's too esoteric. It is too lofty. People will misunderstand it. People will hear it, doubt it. They'll slander it. Better that I don't even say it. Sorry, that's it. Oh, the representative of the assembly, whose name was Moon of Liberation, Bodhisattva, Chetoya Pusa. He said, oh boy, you misunderstood. Don't underestimate the assembly here, they are ready, they are qualified, they are, this is your moment, we are waiting, we are primed, we are anticipating, we're ready, go ahead. Vajra Treasury Bodhisattva said, don't want to risk it. All right. That's where we stopped. <laughs> and it's like, if, if you were into it, if you were following the logic of this text is like, oh, okay. So why in the world would Bajra Treasury, who was handpicked and highly uh, praised, he was, they really beat the drum to, give, to get him out here. How come he stopped? Today, who do we start with? Today, we start with the Buddha. The Buddha's voice happens next. And he, not only the Buddha, but the Buddhas of the 10 directions, all named treasury of Vajra, Vajra treasury, they speak. You ready?
。尔时，世尊从眉间出清净光明，明菩萨立。眼明百千，而生七光明，以为眷属，普照十方，一切世界，米布周边，三恶道苦，觉得休息。At that time. The Tathagata, from between his eyebrows, emitted a pure light named "blazing light of Bodhisattva's powers," with hundreds of thousands of the samkhyas of lights as its retinue, which universally illumined all the worlds throughout the ten directions, pervading absolutely everywhere. The sufferings. Of all the three evil paths, ceased to be. The Buddha sends a light. The light has lights that follow. The light has a name, and the light comes from the place of the Buddha's wisdom. And when that light shines, the hells, the animals, the ghosts. Feel it and experience this end of pain. This light ends pain. Yo jiao yi qie ru lai zhong hui, xian qian zhu fo bu si yi li. 又照十方，一切世界，一切诸佛所加，说法菩萨之身，做事事宜，于上虚空中，成大光明，晕王台而住。It also illuminated the assemblies of all Tathagatas. Manifesting the Buddha's inconceivable powers, it also illuminated the persons of all bodhisattvas, explaining Dharma with the aid of Buddhas throughout worlds in the ten directions. When finished doing that, the light formed a great platform made up of nets of clouds of light, high in space, and remained there. Okay, can I、uh, put the picture in your mind? In other words, that is to say, visualize, see here. Close your eyes. The Buddhas, first of all, the Buddha. This is our Buddha, Shakyamuni. It may not be in his body, but it's our Buddha.、Uh, he. It could be Virochana. It could be Lushana we have in Chinese, which may be Rochana Buddha, Nishanda Buddha. A light comes out from between his eyebrows, and the light shines on the hells, the animals, the ghosts, worlds in all directions, and what appears are Buddhas. All displaying what bodhisattvas can do, and what shows up are bodhisattvas speaking dharma. So we see it's like pop, 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 pop in all directions. If you can imagine with your imagination, see with your wisdom, bodhisattvas. Receiving Buddha's light, just like the one that just came out, so that they can speak Dharma, and then this light, having、um, infused, suffused, nurtured all these Dharma-speaking bodhisattvas, this light goes up into space, and it makes this incredible platform 
with nets of clouds of light in space. Yeah, yeah. Next. Shi Shi Fang Zhu Fo Xi Yi Ru Shi Song Mei Jian Chu Qing Jing Guang Ming Qi Guang Ming Hao Juan Shu. Let's see. Qi Guang Ming Hao Juan Shu Zuo Ye Xi Tong Yu Ci. Yu Yi Zhao Ci Suo Bo Shi Jie Fo Ji Da Zhong. Bing Jin Gang Zang Pu Sa Shen Shi Zi Zuo Yi. 于上虚空中，成大光明，云王台。At that time, the Buddhas of the ten directions, in similar fashion, emitted pure lights from between their eyebrows. These lights, names, entourage, and actions were identical to the first lights. Moreover, they illumined the Buddhas and the assemblies of the Saha world. And the person of Bodhisattva Vajra Treasury upon his lion's throne. High in space, they formed a vast platform of nets, of clouds, of lights. So, do you get this sense of one Buddha sends out a light, and the light shows all these Bodhisattvas speaking Dharma? Receiving the light, not just one, but in all directions. So that means to your right, to your left, behind you, in front of you, below you, above you. This is happening as the lights shine on bodhisattvas who are speaking dharma. Then, in all ten directions, bodhisattvas. Let's get it accurate here. Buddhas in all directions imitate, do the same as Vairochana Buddha, Shakyamuni Buddha, and they also send light out from between their eyes. This is what Buddhas do here in the Abhatamsaka, and those lights are just the same as the first one spoken of. And Vajra Treasury, sitting on his seat, who has Been invited to speak Dharma and is not doing it, he gets bathed in the Buddha's light in all directions, and then the light likewise goes up and forms this tower of light. Okay, Buddhas speak next. 十光台中。依诸佛为神力故而说颂言。Just then, from within the platform of light, through the Buddha's awesome spiritual strength, a voice sounded out and chanted the following verses. Okay, we switch now. We switch now from the story being told in prose to. A poetic form, to possibly an, an ancient form that goes da da di da 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 di da 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 seven verse seven words, and it's a pattern. It's done.、Uh, it specifies in the sutra that it was chanted. So, what language did the Buddha use first? Some people think it was called a Prakrit language. Probably was not spoken, was not written.、Um, the Buddha wanted ordinary folks like us to connect to his teaching. However, at the moment, he they say the Avatamsaka was spoken for Bodhisattvas and Devas.、Um, we get to listen in, but chances are it was not written. Once it's written, who gets to own what's written? Well. Priests, aristocrats, people who could leave the plow, who could leave the paddy field, and the orchard, and the marketplace, and go study language. Who was that? Tiny, tiny, tiny percentage of the population were able to read and write. So the Buddha, wanting the Dharma to serve like 
medicine said, don't write it down. I'll speak it in the language of the people. So there's a good chance that this originally was spoken in a, an oral tradition, not a written tradition. It wasn't spoken in Sanskrit. <laughs> it wasn't spoken in Pali. It was spoken in a uh, patois, a dialect that people could remember, people could pass on. They could hear it, they could understand it, they could share it. And that's why we're going to, in the English, we're gonna include um, a simple melody for the chanting. Okay. In Chinese, it goes something like this. Fo wu dung dung ru shi kong, shirli wu liang shang gong de, ren jian sui shang, shi zhong shang, shi shi zi fa, jia yu bi, fo zi dang cheng zhu fo li, kai zi fa wang zui sheng zang, Shudi Guang Zhi Sheng Miao Heng Yi Fu Wei Shen Fen Bie Shuo Ro Wei Shen Shi Li Suo Jia Dang De Fa Bao Ru Qi Xin Shudi Wu Gou Ci Di Man Yi Ji Ru Lai Shi Zhong Li Sui Zhu Hai Shui Jie Huo Zhong Kan Shou Ci Fa Bi De Wen Qi You Sheng Yi Bu Xin Zhe Yong Bu De Wen Ru Shi Yi Guang Shuo Zhu Di Sheng Zhi Dao Ru Zhu Chan Zhuan Ci Xiu Xi Song Hang Jing Jie Fa Zhi Sheng Li Yi Yi Jie Zhong Sheng Gu. What is happening here? We're getting to hear from within the light that was created in the air by the light from the hair tuft between the Buddha's eyebrows that illuminated bodhisattvas, that light went out, made a platform of light through the Buddha's strength. And from that came a voice. Got it? It's Avatamsaka state. Voices come out of platforms of light and sing. Beyond compare, just like empty space of ten powers, limitless, of merit and virtue supreme, among people most victorious, superior in the world, this Shakya lion's dharmas now give you strength. Disciple of the Buddha, do you receive the Buddha's strength? Set forth this treasury, most supreme of the king of Dharma. The stages, extensive wisdom, practice is wondrous and sublime. Blessed with the Buddha's awesome spirit, please teach us carefully.
those who have the aid of ones who have gone well should obtain these dharma jewels in their minds that all stages undefiled in order to be completed one must possess as well the tathagata's tenfold power be they dragons from the oceans or devas from the heavens those who can accept these dharmas should certainly get to hear them the people who harbor doubts and have no faith will never come to hear truth such as this explain the stages the way of sublime wisdom explain them sequentially and how to cultivate them from stages of cultivation arise dharma wisdom to benefit and aid each living being so what happened was the buddha spoke in a voice from a platform of light and said the buddha just like space is going to help you out i'm going to help you and give you strength the shakya lion take this strength set forth the treasury of dharma speak vajra treasury who are sitting there silent the stages extensive wisdom the practices of how to get there with the aid that we're giving you now is enough please teach us carefully please do it your audience here who are also blessed by the buddha's light should get in their minds in the mind ground the seeds of the dharma all stages in order to complete to be completed have to be present you have to have the tathagata's shirli the buddha's 10 powers so understand what you're doing understand how important this is vajra treasury he says doesn't matter whether it's a dragon that's okay if it's a deva the tian and the long right they're here they can hear them if they can accept the dharmas they get to hear them but people who have doubts people who have no faith the ones you're worried about they're never going to hear it they can't hear this don't worry it's okay to go ahead and speak please explain the stages the way of sublime wisdom give them to us step by step teach us how to cultivate them because why from states of cultivation arise dharma arises dharma wisdom to benefit every living being <laughs> this is uh i i want to be sure that we get this because this is the real thing this is the genuine article this is the real deal um as i was uh contemplating today how to you know how to deliver this how to make it available in a way that people go hmm i see 
Yes, that mm, I want. In fact, I want that. <laughs> I want to hear it too. I was thinking about um, my early influences. And one of them certainly was Kung Fu. People recall? David Carradine? The, uh, the people have to be of a certain age. This is black and white TV. And then if, I think, no, was it color? I guess it was color TV. Was it color? Yeah. It was early on in uh, network television. There was an American TV show that got pitched and was accepted and found an actor. Uh, sadly, Bruce Lee was, didn't make it, but they picked David Carradine, who was Kwai Chang Keen, that was his name. He was wandering through the West. And uh, he had, according to the backstory that we got to see through flashbacks, he had been trained at Shaolin Monastery or an equivalent. That was the idea. And uh, he had a, a teacher. He had a Shurfu, showed him as a young man. And his teacher was blind, interestingly, but he could see with his wisdom. And most uh, the sadly, sadly, the writers of the scripts who did, you know, an outstanding job because this was a time there was nothing like Kung Fu on network TV. So they were, there was no precedent to draw on. They were breaking new ground. Sadly, they didn't have access to the Flower Garland Sutra. Uh, I don't know even if they had access to the Heart Sutra or the Diamond Sutra. There were a few English translations available, but very, very little. So the best they had was Lao Tzu. The Tao Te Ching, uh, the book of the Tao, one of the founding texts of Taoism, Chinese religion, uh, authored by Lao Tzu or somebody else with the same name, uh, was available. It's the second most translated scripture after the Bible, actually. And so much of the wisdom that the young man in the flashback, Kwai Chang Keen, spouts or heard, and then his, his blind Shifu uh, teaches him, is actually Taoist wisdom. But I tell you, it was enough for me and thousands of young American men and women like me and those of us who now turn to YouTube to refresh our memory of Kung Fu, um, it was enough to catch our imagination and interest us in developing our own Kung Fu through study of something that was not the gospels, something that was not scripture, something that was not uh, Hebrew, the texts of Hebrew school. So how many Jewish boys my age, boomer children, how many Catholic schoolgirls our age, uh, how many people who were, had no religious training from their parents, but were interested in science and math followed David Carradine, Kwai Chang Kain, as he stumbled across the West and met prejudice and met injustice and met bias and met fear, and yet was trained, had some genuine Kung Fu, um, and was able to apply that in a peaceful way and uh, show others that, that there was, that the Tao that there was a Tao to cultivate. That was the final lesson of Kung Fu was there is a Tao. It can be the path, it can be the, the way. And because Cain was a good hearted soul, he tried to help people. So the Bodhisattva path, the spirit of the Bodhisattva path, benefiting others is benefiting the self. That's shown, 
that was alive in Kung Fu. So contemplating this whole experience that it was TV, it was network TV, it was on once a week on your TV there in your living room, in your den, in your TV room. And my goodness, there it was face to face with another option, another alternative to the marketplace world, the binary world, the logical world of right and wrong, true and false, uh, duality, and the idea that benefiting yourself was the most important thing. Um, Kung Fu gave us an alternative and it opened not a door, but at least a window to Eastern wisdom. So I was thrilled by Kung Fu and remember the, uh, the, the key line that everybody took out of Kung Fu that brought back the whole state was, was when the blind teacher says, choose wisely grasshopper. The young man in the temple was called Grasshopper. That was Kwai Chang Kane as a young boy. And his, his Shifu, his Sifu, his Shifu, uh, who was blind, told him to choose wisely, right? The, um, uh, Mr. Miyagi was the next generation's Shifu from Kung Fu. Uh, and uh, that was, that's another story. The, um, so I went back to look at, uh, to see if I could find a voice in the uh, episodes of Kung Fu that are gathered on YouTube. And there's a few, uh, it doesn't match the Buddha's wisdom in the Avatamsaka Sutra, but it's a difference between seed and flower. The seeds of that wisdom and the process of growing to the flower are still evident. So where there was absolutely nothing available, no option, no encounter with Asian wisdom, this serial TV show called Kung Fu uh, gave us, uh, opened a window, gave us a push, gave us a compass direction, it's East, that was enough. It was a start for, as I say, thousands of baby boomer children in the West who, who saw that, uh, who were thrilled by watching Kung Fu. So here was the Buddha's voice ringing out through Vajra Treasury Bodhisattva's unwillingness to speak. And what did it say? The Buddha's voice said, go ahead. People who doubt it, people who have no faith won't even hear it. Go ahead, go ahead, okay? That's, I think, amazing in all of the Buddha's sutras to have, first of all, struggle between Chie Toye, Liberation Moon, and Qinggang Zang, Vajra Treasury, Treasury of Vajra. Um, back and forth, back and forth. Please speak, don't wanna, please speak, I'm gonna be quiet. Why are you silent? I'm afraid. Please speak, silent. I'll give you the names, you can hear the names, stop. Right? The Buddhas send light out, the light illuminates all the bodhisattvas in 10 directions speaking Dharma. All the Buddhas of the 10 directions do the same thing. The light makes a tower. From the tower comes the Buddha's voice saying, speak Dharma. Don't be afraid. I've given you what you need. You will do it just right. I trust you. Doesn't matter, dragons, devas, anybody who hears this, they will benefit. Okay, it begins. And, oh man, what happens next? Let's count them. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. There are 12, one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There are twelve stanzas to come. Twelve four-line verses, quatrains that deserve a place in the immortal poetry of the Buddhist teaching. If you had, uh, in the future, perhaps we will, if you had a collection of Buddhist verse, best Buddhist poems, uh, the Buddha's wisdom in verse, if you had a book like that, these 12 verses belong there. They deserve greater circulation. These, the Vajra treasury has been, been charged. He's been given permission. He's given instructions. He's given, given this light, this fresh dose of Buddha's wisdom light. And he's ready. He's ready to go. And what he says at the start, this is his introduction. That he wants all the assembly to know about what he is going to do. Right? He's starting. He's going to be talking now for 10, 10 chapters, 10 classes of instructions that he's going to give now. His work, his job is immense, is vast, and he is ready. He's up to the job. So that's what we're going to hear. But I want folks to recognize what this is, how important this is, and also how beautiful, how incredibly fine this is. Um, there are, they come in five lines now, five words. There are 20, instead of being 28, they are five, four lines of five each, 20, 20 lines, 20, 20 words in the Chinese. And let's dive in. At that time, Bodhisattva Vajra Treasury contemplated the Ten Directions and, in order to increase the faith of the Great Assembly, chanted the following verses. Wulai da xian dao, wei miao, nan ke zhi, fei nian, li zhu nian, qiu jian bu ke de. Wu sheng yi wu mie, xing jing heng ji ran, li go zong hui ren, bi zhi so xing chu. Zi xing ban kong ji wu er yi wu jin, jie tuo yu zhu qu, nie pan ping deng zhu, fei chu fei zhong hou, fei yan ci so shuo, Chugo Ji Kurjibukashua 
共敬戴，我称佛理说，生发微妙音，譬喻此相应。And the very last one， 无量佛身力，现来如我身，此处难宣示，我今说少分。All right. Let's see how.、Uh, yeah, here we go. The ways of the Tathagata's great immortals are subtle, wonderful, and hard to comprehend. Not thought; they're apart from every thought. Those seeking them through seeing cannot attain them. They are not produced and not destroyed. Their nature is pure and always still. They are the place where people who are undefiled, intelligent, and wise practice their wisdom. Their nature, at root, is empty and still. That nature is both non-dual. And infinite, when liberated and set free from all the destinies, one dwells in the impartial realm, that is Nirvana. They are not beginning, nor middle, nor end. Mere words have no way to express. They transcend the three periods of time. Their hallmarks have the qualities of space. The nirvana known to the Buddhas cannot be described in words. The practice of the stages is thus difficult to express, difficult to accept. The Buddha states that arise from wisdom are not thought; they leave the mind's ways behind. Neither are they the gateways of skandhas, realms, or places. The wise know that intellect. Does not reach them, as the track of a bird flying through space is difficult to express and difficult to discern. So too are the ten stages meanings incomprehensible to mind and to thought. They who, from compassion, kindness, and the power of vows, appear and enter the practices of the stages. Gradually reach perfection of the mind. Wisdom's practices are not reflections realm. Such states as these are difficult to perceive. They can be known but cannot be expressed. Through the Buddha's powers, they are proclaimed. You should receive them with due reverence. Wisdom such as these masters the practices. Explanations lasting millions of eons can never exhaust them. My explanation now is but a summary. The true and actual meanings are contained within. With a single mind, await in reverence, while I reflect the Buddha's power and speak. The supreme dharma's subtle, wondrous sounds, with appropriate analogies. And phrases. May every Buddha's limitless spiritual powers come and give me strength. These truths are difficult to express. I shall now explain a small portion of them. Alrighty, powerful stuff.、Um, This is Bodhisattva Vajra Treasury. We're going to be hearing from him all the rest of the way through.、Um, he, the the key, I think, to these twelve verses is perspective on their rare, special nature. What he's telling us is rarest among the rare. 
the word difficult pops up over and over. They're subtle, they're special, they're hard to comprehend. They are not thought. They're apart from your thoughts. You go, but wait, but wait, how else do I, do I dream them? Are they dreams? You want to see them? You can't see them, says Bajra Treasury. Oops. <laughs> Maybe we bit off more than we can chew. They didn't come into being. They never go away. They're always here, but they're quiet. This is where undefiled, intelligent, wise people find their wisdom. That's the 10 stages. Hmm. Choose wisely, grasshopper, says the Sifu in Kung Fu. That's standing outside the door, but that is the door. Wisdom. This is wisdom. It's not discriminating true, false, right, wrong, add it up. It's different, different place. You get here through goodness and purity. Their nature at root is empty and still. It's non-dual. It's not one or the other. It's not a choice like that. If you move the mind to right and wrong, you're outside the door. When liberated and set free from all the destinies of rebirth, you get to that impartial place called nirvana. The stages are not a start. They're not a middle. They're not an end. My words don't contain them. They go beyond past, present, and future. If you want to say what they're like, they're like the air. It's like space. The nirvana of the Buddha is beyond description. So too are the stages. Hard to express. Hard for you to accept. The states of the Buddha that rises from wisdom in your mind, nobody else's wisdom, you don't think about it. They leave the mind behind, nor are they forms, feelings, thoughts, activities, and consciousness. Intellect doesn't go there. The wise know that intellect doesn't go to where the stages dwell. What's it like? Whew. Bird passes by. Do you see the bird's trail in the air? You saw it, but it's not there. It was there, but it's not there now. Hard to express, hard to tell where the bird flew. Likewise, the meanings of the 10 stages that I'm about, because you asked for it. I said, no, the Buddha said, yes. I said, yes. You asked for it, you got it. Don't think about it. Where do they come from? Compassion, kindness, and the power of vows are the door to what we're going to be talking about now. Gradually, the mind is perfected. Wisdom's practices are not the realm of reflection. These states are hard to perceive. You can know them, you can't express them. They come from the Buddha's Tathagata's 10 powers. You should receive them with your palms together and understand that this is special stuff. Wisdom such as these masters the practices. Try to explain it for millions of eons, you'll never get there. What I'm going to give you now is a brief part. It's true, but it's not the whole story because you can't. It's like space. You can't contain it entirely. Sit there, please. Wait and to sit. You can fly past on a cloud if you want, but be patient with a single mind I will now shine back on you what the Buddha sh shone on me and explain the stages, the supreme dharmas, subtle, wondrous sounds. I'll use the appropriate words, the appropriate analogies, so you can understand them. May every Buddha's limitless spiritual powers come and give me strength. These truths are hard to express. I'm now going to begin. Wow, <laughs> that's the, as I say, those 12 verses ought to live 
those ought to be collected and gathered in a collection of best Buddhist lyrics, best Buddhist poetry, right? Best Buddhist verses. Those are, as I say, this is the real thing. This is what me, I, sitting in front of my TV, watching Cain stumble his way across the West uh, as a trained Kung Fu master from Shaolin Monastery, uh, carried his teacher who said, choose wisely grasshopper. That's what I wanted. I wanted this, but you know what? It wasn't available in English. Not only that, not only was it not available in English, for many folks who had access to a Chinese sutra called the Da Fang Guang Fo Hua Yan Jing, it was available, but it was obstructed by people who said, oh, this is philosophy. It's the highest Buddhist philosophy that you can't really understand it. Uh, it's got too much Sanskrit in it. You can't, you know, you don't, it's too obscure. You have to be a specialist. It's not for you. Those were some of the obstacles that kept people from picking up the sutra if they had a copy. But what a blessing that our teacher, Master Shen Hua, said, you, you need this. This is like a mirror. You want to talk bodhisattva? Here it is. Come up to it. Understand this goes beyond choose wisely, grasshopper. Right? This goes beyond the Tao Te Ching. This is the wisdom of the Buddha expressing the Bodhisattva path that exists in your nature. It's a high road. It's a difficult path, but you can do it. You can do it. And I want to point to you all of you, um, the first line. We're going to read one more line here, T-E-D, because this is the key that I want people to take away. Okay. For the royal zhong sheng, shen zhong shan gen, shan xiu zhu heng, shan ji zhu dao, shan gong yang zhu fo, shan ji bai jing fa, shan... Wei shan zhi shi she so she. Let's see. Wei shan zhi shi shan she. There we are. Shan qing jing shen xin li guang da zhi sheng guang da jie si bei xian qian. That's the first teaching out of his mouth that is not a verse in preparation. What does Vajra Treasury say? Disciples of the Buddha, kindness and compassion will arise in those beings who have, ready? Here's the list. Planted their good roots, skillfully cultivated their practices, skillfully accumulated provisions for the way, skillfully made offerings to the Buddha, skillfully amassed pristine pure dharmas, who have established good affinities with wholesome spiritual friends, who have purified their deepest thoughts, and who have made a vast resolve and who have extensive understanding. What's the point of that? Kindness and compassion will arise in beings who have done these things. And he gives us 10 things that are necessary for somebody who wants to learn what bodhisattvas know so that kindness and compassion will arise. That's an important Kindness and compassion will arise. That's the first thing he says. If you've done those 10 things, and from that, you can start to study the first practice called the practice of happiness. So what I get from that is the importance of kindness and compassion in 
the Bodhisattva path. If we want to do what Bodhisattvas did, do, if we want to close that, thank you. If we want to, um, here we are. Excuse me for one second while I dig this up. There we are. There we are. Um, scrolling down here. Don't go away, be right with you. Oh, this is, takes longer than I thought to scroll all the way down. Sorry about that. People scrolling, you can get seasick watching this. There we go. So the importance of kindness and compassion, meaning if we want to do what bodhisattvas do, if we want to understand the Flower Garland Sutra, and yet we let ourselves get angry a lot, if we are cruel to animals, if we are mean to our spouses and our siblings and our employees, we'll be frustrated because that hardness of mind will not allow what Bajra Treasury wants us to understand to grow. We'll be admiring the 10 stages, but we'll be obstructing its own growth, growing, nurturing in our minds. Think of a garden. If we want beautiful roses, if we want beautiful um, Agapanthus, we had nice blue agapanthus here. If we want lotuses, like you have see on the screen here, and we go out and salt the ground, put salt on our garden, those beautiful flowers won't grow. The anger, the cruelty, the hardness is like salt. Um, keep the analogy going. If we don't use a sh shovel and a hoe, and a pitchfork and a rototiller to chop up the garden, to make the soil soft and plenty of air loamy with tilth in it. We don't add amendments if we don't add potassium and ash and such. We might wanna grow a garden, but we can't because the, the ground is not able to grow. The mind is the same. Compassion in the mind grows when we let our thoughts be soft and kind. That's the good roots that, that uh, Vajra Treasury is talking about. All right, so there we go. Uh, we did it again, we read, and I talked a little bit more in between than I did last week, maybe adding some air and amendments to the soil of my <laughs> description. Um, See what you think. The goal, again, is to take a different look at the 10 stages, one that stitches together the ideas into bigger pieces so that we can appreciate the, uh, the dynamism and uh, the power and the special qualities of this text, rare and special. Okay, um, somehow a project that has been brewing on the stove for a long time uh, has come to fruition just recently. And that is putting verses of the Universal Door chapter to music. This is the Lotus Sutra. We switch sutras here on you. And we're at the, uh, the, um, the, the Chong Song, the verse part. to hear, see what you think. We'll just do a little bit. I want you to hear the flavor. This is a shameless ad. If you, 
uh, maybe uh, Jerry or someone who's on the, our translators can look at the chat box and you can show folks how to find our weekly, um, maybe Jin Chuan, Jin Chuan knows how to do that, you can feed it. Where is the, uh, the, the list of names to listen to the Pumanpian, the Universal Door Chapter weekly lectures? We're, we're long into it, we're not far from the end, but um, we've reached the verses part and the music seems to be working. So uh, if anybody hears this and says, I would like to listen in, it's in English, mind you, but there's a Chinese translation, there's a Vietnamese translation. Anyway, here's how the verses go. World honored one, complete with wondrous hallmarks. Several questions I would ask again. How did this disciple of the Buddha earn the name Guan Shiryin? Then the world honored one, his every feature full, answered in melodious verse to infinite resolve. Come listen and I'll tell you Guan Yin's story. How deftly she responds to every side. Spanning ages past the kin of numbers. With oceanic bows both deep and wide. Serving ancient Buddhas several billions. Her pure and lofty bows in brief I'll tell. Whoever sees her face or learns about her, not him, who can hold this Bodhisattva's name, will leave behind the sorrows of existence. And so this cultivation's not in vain. Namo Guan Shi Yin. Namo Guan Shi Yin. Should you be pushed into a raging fire by enemies so harmful, mean, and cruel, evoke the strength on Yin Bodhisattva, the blaze will turn into a limpid pool. Between every verse, we add uh, Guan Yin's name, which is indeed the way you evoke the strength of Guan Yin Bodhisattva. That means you, just the way we request the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas at the start of this lecture, by saying Namo Guan Shi Yin, you bring to mind. In Chinese, it says Nian Bi Guan Yin Li. You remember, you recall, you are mindful of the strength of Bi Guan Yin, of that Guan Yin Bodhisattva, right? So, by in between we go Namo Guan Shi Yin, Namo Guan Shi Yin. That's evoking the strength right there. So that's how we develop the compassion. If we feel insufficiently compassionate to get the ten stages Dharma, Ni and Bi Guan Yin Li, recite Guan Yin's name. <coughs> if cast adrift upon the mighty ocean. Where dragons, ghosts, and sharks in turn surround. Look the strength of Guan Yin Bodhisattva. You'll float atop the waves and will not drown. Suppose an evil person pushed you headlong from atop the peak. All wondrous tall, evoke the strength of Guan Yin Bodhisattva, and like the sun in space, you will not fall. Let's do one more, you get the idea. Perhaps you tumble down from Vajra Mountain. Being wicked ruffians who pursue, invoke the strength of Guan Yin Bodhisattva, and not the slightest harm will come to you.
So that's just a flavor of what we've got waiting for you on California. It's Friday at 1230 um, in, uh, there we go, in uh, here in Australia. It's 5.30 in the morning. Everybody goes, oh, okay, ha-ha. Uh, 5.30 in the morning. If you're in China, oh my. If you're in Taiwan, oh my. If you're in, Aus if you're in Malaysia, 3.30 in the morning, sorry. Way, way too early. Sorry, sorry. But it's English. So uh, it's English with a Chinese translation. If you feel vigorous, if you can't get to sleep, if, you've, if you're in lockdown and you have nothing to do, uh, get up that early in the morning. Listen to the sutra. It's a good way to start the morning. 5.30 here in the Gold Coast. 3.30 in China, Taiwan, Malaysia, Singapore, Hong Kong. Sorry about that. Here's the form. Uh, Universal Door Lectures. Put your name in there. Tell us where you are. Notice it's in Vietnamese and Chinese. How did you hear about it? That's it. That's all we want to know. We'll happy, be happy to put you on our mailing list. And then um, you will get a, a weekly reminder. So here's anybody on the, there we go. Copied it to the YT, okay, YouTube chat box. Thank you. It's in your YouTube chat box. Um, those of you on this who can see the chat here can pick it up. Let me, it's kind of hard to read uh, if I were to, type it here, it would look like this, scrolling down. There it is. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a big number. Nobody wants to read that off here. Okay, we are done. Thank you for joining. I'm going to ask Jin Chuan Shi, who is there at Berkeley, to tell us about Berkeley Monastery events. What's going on? Jin Chuan, you want to help us okay. out? Um, so we're now officially starting our fall semester and our classes are setting up again. So on the top, you see the beginning meditation class by Stephen Tanner will begin this upcoming uh, September 15th. So two, two Wednesdays from now. And then that will be on uh, practical meditation, a course for beginners. That's Wednesday evenings. Um, Professor Verhoeven, Marty, We'll also be starting his lecture series starting at 7.30 p.m. on Fridays. Our website is in different order here, but yes, so you see there. Also lecture on the Avatamsaka Sutra. So he began uh, yesterday evening, and so he'll continue every Friday from now on. Um, then we have our just our regular BBM program. Uh, we just finished our Amitabha session, so that we should take off. But our regular program, 4 to 5, 6.15 to 7.15. Our uh, Dharma reflections. Oh uh, no no no! Uh, no. If you just go to BBM. No, it's it's uh. If you go all the way to the top, you click the BBM online link. Okay. The BBM online. Yeah, and you see the schedule for our daily ceremonies and practices. So you can just tune in. Um, we have a full day of Dharma events. So that's what's happening at the monastery. In addition to our regular lectures, like Rav Hongshur and um, others. The CDTB will be having their Earth Store session starting tomorrow. Uh -huh. So if people are interested in joining that, I think you can go to either cdtbusa.org or the drba.org website. Let's, I'll show that. Let's see here, drba.org. You can join the... It's not it, drba, that's hyphen. drba.org, you have to... Yeah, you went to Zoom, there you go. Okay, and first door bodhisattva sessions right there in the first column from the left. And also, um, if you would like to join in, Dharma Master Jing Fu will be lecturing tomorrow evening. He was invited to speak on earth door bodhisattva, so that should be good. Um, I'll be helping to translate. So if you go to the CDDB, I think it's the CDDB live Zoom link, you'll find the the the, the link for Dharma Master Jing Fo's lecture. Okay, and what's the, put that. what's the topic tomorrow? <laughs> the topic, Jing Fo came up with a kind of like a dwelling. Let me find it. It's 
but it's on Earth Store Bodhisattva. It's something like emulating the spirit of Earth Store Bodhisattva. Uh Emulating the spirit of Earth Store Bodhisattva, fostering peace, happiness, and harmony in the world. Right. That uh, talk. Yeah, great. Okay, yeah, Dharma Master Jinfo is a uh, uh, favorite around the Berkeley Monastery. Uh, he'll be yeah. explaining in Chinese, uh, lecturing, and then Jin Chuan Shi will translate into English for him. Terrific. Okay, well, thank you for that. And uh, we will close today with our mantra, our Medicine Buddha mantra. And the reason why we are transferring merit with this is in consideration for the folks who are suffering from the, the COVID-19 pandemic, which seems to be with us for quite a while now. Um, I might add that uh, folks, if they want to uh, contribute to well-being for their neighbors, allow the vaccine to go into your bloodstream. Don't think about it too much. Uh, anybody who's been in the armed forces, anybody who's been in the military uh, has been poked and prodded and needled and jabbed so many times, just do it again, twice. And if you need a booster, get a booster. Uh, that way you won't be contributing. I'm, I'm doubly vaccinated. I got two jabs of AstraZeneca here in Australia. What a blessing for me. Uh, and I'm very grateful. That way I know that I won't be passing it on uh, inadvertently. So uh, just, you know, sometimes we just want to do what's best and uh, not think too much. That way, uh, if we can all get vaccinated, the virus will have no hosts and it'll go away. There's no doubt about that. So anyway, my thoughts on it. We will recite Medicine Buddha's mantra, send out those good vibrations to the world. Genuinely uh, Buddhist energy, a contribution that we can make to quelling the current uh, virus that is troubling and afflicting so many of us worldwide. Okay, let's transfer that merit. See you all next week.
you'd like to join me, we can bow to the Buddhas with this image of Buddha Hall at CTDB back before the 10,000 Buddhas came. Here we go. I'm going to bow three times to Master Shenhua. I invite you to join me if you care to. Bow in respect to the Venerable Master. Thanks for joining everyone. See you all next week. Be well.